Mark Savage here, up and coming as Kawasaki versus 650. Little look round. Yes, I got carried out some stickers, but it is a Cat N, so it had a few scratches on it. As a quick look round, now we're gonna have a little vlog. Hello, YouTubers, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my vlog. Today's vlog, we are riding a Kawasaki versus or KLE 650. Now, the Kawasaki Versus is a little 650 parallel trim. Nice and easy to work on, unlike the V's, because the plugs are easy to get to once you get the tank off. Done a servicing video on this, I actually done quite a few videos, but not a ride about. Now, riding these little bikes, and you may notice I need petrol, so we're going to do that. Display on this is pretty uh, standard, really, for Kawasaki's. Riding these little parallel twins, and we'll break quite heavy here and not get splatted. Yeah, well done, you're in the middle. Why don't you move over for fuck's sake? Jesus, how much room does she want? Sorry for the beeping, and you're going to wait, and you're going to wait. Just so as you know, you've got to have your eyes really looking around on little roads like this. You know, not speeding, 20 mile an hour up there then, and everybody wants to pull out and try and kill you. Well, it is a school run. So all the mums now, after they've dropped their precious little packages off to school, then forget about everybody else and wants to kill them. Anyway, <laughs> after that, riding a parallel train is a little bit, well these bikes anyway, feel like a little 125 if I'm honest with you. You know, if you don't open the throttle, 125's got a little bit of kick when you open the throttle up like this, but they don't do much else. The difference with the Kawasaki 650 is that when you open the throttle, you get that sort of pull and then you can keep going. Now I did fit today a little touring screen. You know how, you know how when you buy something off eBay and the picture looks, makes it really big. So when this came, I was a little bit disappointed. However, it is taking a bit more wind off me. How originally it had a tiny little uh, clear screen. I don't think barely covered the clocks. I'm honest with you. So I'm going to see how this one goes today. It does seem to push against you because you are sitting up now. The nice thing about this car is like is the front suspension. As you see then, a lot of travel, it really does ride well over potholes and divots and bumps and stuff. You've got that extra travel suspension unlike a sports bike. The suspension, I quite like this you know. It's nicely tucked onto the right hand side, looks quite nice. I've seen other ones painted or different colour ones and it stands out quite nicely. So I think it did well there. Two up though. Ah, The seats. For me, I'm only a short ass, but I could do have been pushed back a little bit. I don't know if it's because I got used to riding sports bikes or not. I just feel like I want to push the bum back all the time. As for the passenger, again it's a nice seat, but the um, it's not so much the engine's wanting. I mean it's only a little 650. And it's only a 60 brake horsepower. So there's enough power there, but I just find it a little bit wanting. Now, due to the suspension on here, it's great single setup. Very smooth. But I think you'd really have to tighten up the rear suspension to its maximum. Because I know your missus might not be in any way, shape or form weighty. And if you watched my last video, no one just slapped in the back of the head. However, it really does pull it down. And what happens is the chain ends up stretching on these little bikes. And I've had it done to me. I've had my friend's bike do it as well. Where he had a little girl on the back all the time. I think she weighed eight odd stone, something silly like that. Um, but yet his chain stretched. He was constantly adjusting it, even though the suspension tore up. So I think if you're going to have one versus, go for the 1000cc. And I think that would cope very well. But for single touring, these are great bikes for commuting, touring, put them back forth to the shops. I'm 5'8", uh, perfect height for these little bikes. Although I'm not flat footed, there's no weight to them. 181 kilos. Compared to my uh, Mammoth Triumph trophy, you know, which weighs the size of a planet. How can it weigh the size of a planet? My Triumph trophy that weighs the same as a small shark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, it weighs bloody heavy, 400 odd, whatever it is. These little ones are very light, so you can tip your turret, 
with someone on the back, it does to bring the back down, but then you get the sort of lurch you left and right if they move. Ooh, OS. Oh, is it an ST? Uh, it's an OS. They're a lot of money, you know. Oh, nine plates around here, 2009. So eight year old, nine year old ones. And they're going for like 21,000 pounds. They do look nice. Although I can smell that's running rich. Really, really rich. God. Anyway, let's just go along a bit here then. What's he got, a box for you or something? He ain't moving very fast, is he? Now, you really do have to push these little bikes. Now, you can't ride this like you would an ordinary uh, four inline four or another sporty bike, the 600s, that have got four cylinders. I find riding one of these bikes, you literally just whack open the throttle to get your speed up. You're not hurting it, it enjoys it to be honest with you. So you literally come in here, open her up. Nice bit of banking. And you have to go, whee, whee. You have to do it, you know, to get some speed up. Otherwise, as I said, it does feel like the 125 where you've got your full throttle open and you're waiting for it to take off. Now, my last video about the tyres, I haven't as of yet changed them. So I'm running a Mitchell on the front, and I'm running a Bridgestone on the back. And as you see there, I'm not frightened to still turn left and right. So, as you see, I'm not too frightened of banking. Little nod. That's a pan, that was. So you can get these bikes over. I am a little bit hesitant, I must admit. Well, it didn't look like it then, did it? Um, I definitely think when it starts raining, I'd definitely change that front tyre. There's no way I would have felt confident banking with odd tyres that I've got on here. Though the grip's there. And I've had a... Uh, thank you for all the comments in my last video. A lot of you said that you'd stick to pairs as well. Professionally and unprofessional people both the same thing. I know a lot of people said they have done it and have not really noticed any difference. So I think it's it's in your head maybe. Anyway, agility. Yeah, these are great. This one's got a back box on it. The panniers are tiny if you really want them on there. But they do ride really well. They are responsive. You haven't got the roar of a four-cylinder pull back when you shut the throttle which don't get on the V's. I'd have this over an SV any day. Top gear and I can accelerate away. Uh, lorry, lorry, let's move over a little bit here. It's moved right over, thank you very much. What's the whole road? Oh, did you see that up there, there that grey car thinking, I'll have you out the way, you little Fiat 500. Brakes are pretty good. If you notice then the front went right down. I do like the back brake on this, it's very good. Right, we have a learner in front. Hmm, no, I can't slip down the middle here. And there's no reason why we're not moving anywhere. I need petrol today, so I'm going to have to go straight. I'm not done the bypass. Well, eventually moved. Yay! Everybody has to learn, don't they? Now, exhausts. Hand out, thank you. Exhausts. I have fitted a few exhausts to one of these little bikes. Again, I've got a video. I'm trying to say what's my videos, you know. Anyway, I changed the exhaust for the um, Max Torque Can MTC exhaust on here. Ah, uh, do you know what? It sounds nice if you like that twin little rattle roar. Honestly, it sounds like little 125 again. I shouldn't really say that, really, but I'm not going to change the exhaust on here. It hasn't got the sound that I want, you know, the big proper roar sound you like. It, it just sounds like a, a noisy little 125, so I'm not going to do it. I love changing exhaust, you know that. If you, uh, again, watch my Kawasaki Taco exhaust one. thousand under the only bridge where we live that sounded nuts 
and I've got the pipe still and I could put one on here but you wouldn't get the same sound out of it so I'm not going to do it all I've done so far on this one is put these little hand grips on here that I showed on the last video I was doing and I've got the little screen which again I suppose would have been nice if it's about this tall but it wasn't now I got this rather than the Triumph Trophy to ride for the winter I thought for what I paid for this little baby uh, it made sense this has got exactly the same engine as the ER6 that I showed you in another video just you are more set up and big on these which a much smoother ride all round really these bikes are because of the longer suspension the seating position you sit higher you, you feel more able to dodge like that huge manhole there but on a sports bike you know you'd have hit that you really felt it and you wouldn't have necessarily been able to spin around it as much as that and of course I wouldn't have done that in the wet overtaking is fine as I said you have it when you really push it I mean this goes up to ten and a half thousand revs I ain't been up that high um, she poodles up to 5,000 revs and when you get past that 5,000 revs you do feel that the little boost as it were kicking <coughs> with 60 brake horsepower you're not gonna light the world on fire when you think the Jexa 600's got like 98 for God's sake you know um, you're not gonna but you have got torque you have got that little bit of mid-range as well so yeah my little journey is about 10 mile or 12 mile a day um, and they're brilliant for that I have done a longer journey on it when I'm touring you can pack these up with a lot of stuff they get around about 48 miles to the gallon it says I don't think again Kazaki exaggerate them figures slightly they tell you you've got like a 19 litre tank so that's over 4 gallons and yet they say it does 150 miles to a tank so maths don't quite work out there but uh yeah, I've got one little blob on here. It's not as bad as the Z1000 with the old petrol gauge. It does, you know, it's a bit more accurate, should I say. End of day, it does come down to how you ride it. If you've got the full throttle open, you're whizzing along like I do, you're not going to get brilliant miles to the gallon. It's more fun. Right, so I had a ZR 1400, 28 miles to the gallon out of that beast. I had cars do better than that. And that wasn't giving it some. So it's a little treat, isn't it? The Triumph 1215, though, that does the same mask going, that's double the engine size, literally. Let's fill up with fuel, shall we? 13 and a half litres. Mm. One pound 30 a gallon now. Jesus. I mean, you know I've had some big, big bikes. The 30 mile an hour has been painful, you know, in first gear, jerking back and forth. And that's where commuter bikes come into their own. This is 30 mile an hour and it's sitting at it absolutely perfectly. It's not hurting it at all. Very, very comfortable. Knocking down another gear. I think I was in third gear then. Bus, so let's get out of the way of him. And squeeze in there. So you can pick the speed up when you want to. A nice, simple little vlog. Providing a little Kawasaki parallel trim, some facts and figures, nothing exciting. Thanks for watching. Do take care of yourselves on the road. There's not a sun in your eyes. The sticky roads now, it's going to get a bit pooey now. We're heading September, middle of September, so the weather's going to turn nasty soon where it's going to rain all the time. And it's just unpleasant to ride, really. Your gloves get wet, you get wet. Nah. Who'd ride all year round anyway? Well, me and other millions of motorcyclists. Anyway, I digress. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching my vlog. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.